Dissolving is a common and familiar process. Put something like sugar into water, give it a stir, and it dissolves. But what actually happens when something dissolves in water? We're probably most familiar with solids dissolving into liquids, so we will focus on that process as we describe dissolving. In this case, the solid, like table salt, is called the solute, and the solute dissolves into the solvent, which in this case is water. Together, the solute and the solvent become the solution. For a substance to be able to dissolve into a liquid, they have to have the same polarity. To put it simply, when we zoom down to the molecular level, we'll notice that some substances are polar and some are nonpolar. Polar substances have charges, plus and minus. They are called polar because the separated positive and negative charges make up opposite sides of poles. Like north and south pole have opposite directions, north and south. The polar molecule has opposite charges, positive and negative. We won't get into where these charges come from in this video, but for more information on molecular polarity, watch the video linked in the description. For now, just know that water is a very polar molecule. Most people are familiar with the chemical formula for water, H2O. It has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. And this is what the water molecule looks like. The two hydrogen atoms have positive charges, and the oxygen atom has a negative charge. It's polar. So other polar substances, substances with charges, can dissolve into water, like salt or sugar. But nonpolar substances, substances without charges, cannot dissolve, like oil. So let's zoom in and see what actually happens when something dissolves. We'll look at regular old table salt for this example. Table salt has the chemical formula NaCl. It is called an ionic compound because the compound is formed of ions. Ions are charged atoms. The sodium ion is a sodium atom, the symbol Na from the periodic table, with a positive charge. And the chloride ion is a chlorine atom, the symbol Cl from the periodic table, with a negative charge. These opposite charges attract and the ions stick together, and they form a lattice like this. When placed in water, however, the ions separate from each other and attract to the water molecules. The ions like sticking to the water molecules because there are so many of those water molecules, they completely surround the ion and stabilize that charge. This is the dissolving process, when individual particles of the substance separate and get surrounded by water molecules. Now the particles are too small to see, and that's why a dissolved substance is invisible. They're still there. Now they're just too small and spread out. A measurement that compares the amount of solute to solution is called concentration. The more concentrated a solution, the more solute particles that are dissolved. There's even a maximum amount of a given solute that can dissolve into a solution. When a solution reaches the maximum allowed dissolved solute, the solution is saturated. An unsaturated solution means there's still room for more solute. 